What's going on, everyone? Bleh. Sorry. Re redo. Collab video today with Jordan. She is known as JJ Weezy on YouTube. Is that your thing on YouTube? No. No. My YouTube is just Jordan Cheyenne. Jordan Cheyenne. JJ yeah. Weezy, I'm even not a fan of. I got I think like someone awesome. took my username, so I've just had it forever. <laughs> Anyways, this is Jordan. She's Hello. lovely. She has an awesome YouTube channel channel where she talks about literally anything and everything. Like beauty, yeah. you have a kid, you're a mom, so mm -hmm. that's awesome. And then she also has a boss babe series, so she wanted to come up and you know do a collab together so we can talk about business, entrepreneurship, YouTube, all that kind of all that kind of stuff because we connect on that and yeah. both of our audiences are really interested in that topic. So why don't you tell them like yeah. a little bit about your journey? What's up? Um, if you guys have never seen my videos, I'm also a full-time YouTuber or like influencer, and I do pretty much everything on my channel. I started with beauty videos a long time ago when those were like super popular, um, and then I had my son, and I kind of started showing vlogs kind of day in the life of being a single mom like my struggles i guess with my little man um he's almost five so it's just so us cute. thank you he's <laughs> literally my everything but yeah i do like hauls i kind of share my fitness and weight loss journey as well but recently my absolute favorite thing that i've been doing is my boss babe series so i did a few videos like around this topic and realized that it was such a passion for me so i made it a whole series it's basically just empowering young people um specifically women with some of the stuff it's targeted towards but um, sharing everything I've learned with being a young entrepreneur, making money, affiliate marketing, really sharing with you guys how I've been able to be successful. Also saving money. I have videos on how to better your credit, uh, how to move out on I your own. I love that one. That was a good one. Yeah. If you just want to be financially independent, you don't want to depend on no man, on your parents, <laughs> I got you. Like just anything I've been through, I share with you guys in the Boss Babe series. And I wanted to go on my channel and interview another person who I respected and thought was a total Boss Babe. So of course I chose her. So we talked all about like her podcast and her whole journey on my channel. So here we wanted to do a continuation. So uh, she asked her yeah. audience for questions on her Snapchat mm -hmm. and then we did a and a on her channel. So if you guys are interested, go over there and there's like the continuation of this video on her channel. Well, it's basically the start and this is like the second half. So this is part two. So make yeah. sure you guys go subscribe to her channel. It's super awesome. I started following mm -hmm. you a few Thank months you. ago when you commented on mine. I was like, yeah. oh, hi, who are you? <laughs> yeah, I said I had been like, watching her friendship. for a bit because of her fitness videos and like I've been up and down my own weight loss journey and I want to follow people who are like realistic about their progress and setbacks and I found her a while back but now I've been so into her videos and other people who share like their entrepreneurial journey yeah. and like we were just talking about Lewis House and like that's like what I'm into right now the law of attraction mm -hmm. any people like that who I can that follow woo -woo stuff that I like love <laughs> yeah like I feel like I could talk about that forever so yeah I wanted to just so share let's do it we're gonna yeah, talk about it let's forever. just get into it so or at least in a 20 minute YouTube video at the very least <laughs> yeah so if you're from my channel we did her whole like business story if you don't even know that's all on my channel we have like a full video on it but should I just open up some more questions yeah open up some okay. more questions and then we're gonna she her audience asked questions so someone said what is your main tip for gaining a fan base at the beginning when you literally have no followers like how do you get started Ooh, that's a good question why don't you go okay <laughs> Okay. Um, I think with like Instagram and Snapchat, it can, or Instagram and YouTube, it can be discouraging at the beginning when you post something and you put so much effort into the video and into the editing and you're like, you get like five, 10 views. You're like, how is this, how am I gonna originally at the start get my content out to people? Mm. What I found is the best is to research other videos that are the same as you. So if you put up a fitness video or what I eat in a day, search for other videos with that same title and you can narrow the search down on YouTube to like posted within the past day, the past week. So someone with similar content, go on their page, check out their videos, maybe comment something that's really genuine, not like spamming them. Mm -hmm. Come check out my channel. These are posting your link everywhere. You don't of course want to be annoying. Yeah. Yeah. And a really awesome way to grow is having like genuine connections and friendships. So don't think like you really need those connections. Don't think you can do it on your own. Making genuine friends is one of the best ways. Mm. So I think with Instagram too, you have to go and link up with other people and comment on their stuff. Something genuine, of course, but like you have to make interaction. Um, also asking questions and like the Instagram caption, that'll promote someone to comment on your post. And then your post will get seen that much more. 
Um, but I know it's mm. like super frustrating at the beginning when you have nothing. Yeah. And you're like, what do you think for like your best um, growth tips? Honestly, I think like when you're just getting started, it's really important to, like you said, comment on other videos, but utilize other people's videos that do well in terms of like titles, keywords. Yeah. YouTube is like a search engine, so keywords, yeah. which is, a, so keywords are basically things that people would search. So there's something called VidIQ, which I use. I don't know if you use it. I've heard of that one. It's like a, um, if you put tags into your videos, like you tag your videos, mm -hmm. it'll tell you that it's this much more keyword searchable out of like 100. It'll give you like a score. Okay. So whatever tags that you use, essentially you have to have similar tags that are in your title and then everything that's in your title should also be in your description. So it's like yeah. very searchable. And then utilize things that are searchable and really interesting to people in your niche and your topic and then make videos about them and be really consistent, like put in yeah. the work, do the hard things, make videos that are really valuable or really helpful to people and just focus on doing that as much as possible. And that'll also help you when people come to your channel and somehow find you, whether it's from the search engine, from the recommended page, or if you do a collab with someone, they'll find your page, find your channel and be like, oh, they already have a ton of great videos, I want more. So having that foundational amount of videos that are like really, really helpful and putting effort into them is awesome. Yeah, we were just saying at the beginning too, um, like I've been doing YouTube for four years, and at yeah. the beginning, like, of course it was only a job for me, like really this past two, once I hustled and grew up the audience, but at the beginning, even though I wasn't getting that many views, I posted three times a week. Oh yeah. So if someone came to my channel, there was, and they loved a video, they could go on like a little marathon because I had right. like 20 videos be previously put up. And YouTube likes that. They like want yeah, people to keep they like watching the consistency, your videos. For sure, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, what are the things you've done in your career that you feel are the most key things that have changed your path, bettered your direction, and overall made you a better boss babe? Mm. Girl, you got a complicated question. That's a good question. Do you want to go first? Okay, major key things that have changed your path. Well, yeah, we kind of, most of these questions are kind of similar, so we t did like, talked about a lot of this already on my channel too. Okay. Key things, I think, depending what is your full time, like some people have a million followers on Instagram and that's their full time thing. For me, my full time is YouTube. I utilize Instagram as a business, but it's not my full time thing yet. I'm still growing it up. So something key I feel like on my YouTube is realizing at a point after doing videos for so long, which type of videos I'm really passionate about and that I love like helping people like with my boss babe series. And I think there's, um, it can be hard to get caught up in like what the trends are, like what's oh, yeah. trending, what videos are getting millions of views. And you're like, I want to make it. I need to do a video like that. I need to do it. Eat hot Cheetos naked in the bath. Like, <laughs> Whatever it is that's trending, like viral right? videos. Yeah, like for fitness people, it's 10k calorie challenges. Yes, 20, there's a 20k done. out there. Ridiculous. I haven't even done it. Yeah, like I've seen all those, and I get caught up in that too because I feel like I'm producing good content. Like maybe my views are low on something. I'm like, I need a video that will boost me up there. But I think you can see so clearly who is genuine or is talking about something they're genuinely passionate about right through the camera. Totally. So from the get go, you're going to be successful on your channel or your Instagram if you post about what you love. And it's so hard, like I'll even say it is hard to not get caught up in what everyone's doing, you know? But I think a major thing for me in, especially with like the comment section, I notice my comments now on the Boss Babe videos, not one like hate or rude comment. Mm. People appreciate that I'm like sharing my knowledge or like talking about something I love because they're interested in it too. And you're always gonna have like rude people, like duh. Yeah. But I think like being truly authentic, even though that's corny, that's what's gonna get you to grow. No, I, I think. agree. And like yeah. people can feel, I think that like nowadays since I think a lot of people are like worried about how saturated it is, but actually mm -hmm. that can be something to your benefit because people's BS meters are like really high. Yeah. <laughs> I think people can just feel the BS like right away and they're like, screw you, like you're, yeah. you're bullshitting me or whatever now. Yeah. And when you can feel the genuine interaction through the camera, it seriously benefits you. So being as much of yourself as humanly possible. And then I think to answer uh, her question more, um, something that really helped me and changed the way that my business was run is to focus on myself. So focus on what I really want to and like to do and then actually like take time to sit down and think about it and actually like create strategies for yourself. That's not just like, I hope this is gonna work. Say, I'm going to do these things and these things will help me reach this goal and this is what I'm gonna do on a day-to-day -day basis in order to make that thing happen. You can't just have like, an arbitrary one year goal. Like I want to hit 100,000 subscribers, great, but what are you doing about it? You need it? a solid plan to get there. Yeah. And work on it daily. Yes. We talked a little bit like on my channel too, if you can't work on it 
at all hours of the day if it's only your part-time and like you get home from your full-time job and you're exhausted it will show the amount of work that you put in is the amount of results that you get that's something that andy frisella always says on his podcast mm. and it's like you if you're truly passionate about it and you put in the time and the effort your following will grow for me it was really slow at the beginning some people get like a video and they get a million views and they're like lucky in that way kind yeah, of must be nice i know but um even if the following is slow, I encourage you guys keep going. If it's a business you really want to pursue because everything takes time and that mm -hmm. time will pass anyways. So you might as well be doing something productive yeah. during that time. Yeah. yeah. And then you literally can never count on a video going viral. Even if you like make it and you hope it does, yeah. you can't, you cannot count on it and like hope that it does. And like, this is going to be the video. Yeah. Just make really good videos with really good titles and really good thumbnails. And eventually one or two of them will like take off and give you that boost that you need. Like YouTube is kind of random, honestly. Like it's so I had a random yeah. video from like a few months ago, get like a bunch of views and I was like, what the hell? Yeah. But the and views themselves too, like that one video got a bunch of really gross views from guys. Cause like my body was in the title. So like yeah. in the thumbnail or whatever. So, and YouTube and is like weird nowadays. They're, pu they're pushing a lot of like kid friendly stuff. Yeah. and like younger, um, more like ad friendly stuff that they'll put on the totally. recommended side. So sometimes if someone's watching your video, all your other videos won't pop up on the side. So you really have to grab their attention to when the video's over, they're like, oh, I love this person. Let me click on their channel, see what else they have up. Um, so, you know, try to put the best like production, um, not necessarily all fancy or anything. Even your, even people ask me all the time, like I want to start and I don't have a camera. Our iPhones do 1080p. Mm. Like it's truly about the bulk of the content. As long as you have some type of camera or like you don't have the best lighting, don't let that discourage you from starting. Like we were just yeah. saying, start today. Yeah. Start like today. no matter what your situation is or what like equipment that you have. Everyone's so happy that it's you. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone so just funny. loves her. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. so what is your best advice on taking the first step when you're financially strapped? Can't afford your initial investment in your business. Mm. Equipment, supplies, marketing. The best thing that you could possibly do if you can't afford to spend money on your business just yet is to speak to the people that you already know. You already have a network of many people that you've met before and you have probably some sort of service that you can offer them. So literally one of my employees that I have now, she said that when she switched from her business managing job to doing full-time consulting and online business managing, which is what she does for me. Mm -hmm. She literally just sent an email to her friends and family saying, Hey, I'm going through this massive life change. These are my skills. Here's how I can help you. Let me know if you need help. Yeah. And literally that is it. Just communicating with people and saying, here I am. I have this new thing. I have this service. I, I can help you. How can I help serve you? Yeah. And chances are they're going to want to support you. If it's friends and family mm -hmm. and they see that you've left a job you're unhappy in or a situation that's draining you physically, mentally, they're going to want to help you get started. You would think, you know, if they're supportive. Yeah. Um, so yeah, utilizing friends and family, definitely. I would say that kind of went into what I said at the end of the last question on investing. Literally guys, if it's YouTube that you want to do, if that's the platform you're going after, use your iPhone. Like mm -hmm. I would always say go outside. The sunlight is better than any $200 ring light I've bought. Like totally. the outside lighting, it looks amazing on camera. Most computers can come with, I believe it's iMovie, which is a free version if you have any iMac, even if it's old. Totally. And then there's like Windows Movie Maker. There's so many these days I think that are free. If that's the only thing holding you back, Nah, like you gotta start. You gotta I have think, a bigger I think reason. That's, I think that. that's an excuse. I would call. totally. <laughs> yeah, get out your iPhone and get it popping. Someone just said you girls are a twenty out of ten. What's up? Though? Thanks. <laughs> Do people doubt you be or belittle you because you're young and not as established, Ooh, that's or maybe question. like don't have a degree or don't start with all this cash flow? Mm. That's a good one for you. Yeah. Uh, yes, everybody doubts me all the time. <laughs> no, oh my God, not anymore. I no, like, yeah, I guess so it, supportive. Well, I like diminished. I definitely had a couple Instagram accounts called Scamanda Gucci where I was being, I was a scamming person. We just talked about this. You're always, gonna, you're always gonna have haters. Yeah, and you're gonna yeah. fail in businesses that you do and people aren't gonna like some of them, but you're gonna grow from that. Yeah. But I feel like every channel or every Instagram is gonna get a hate at some point, but your comeback is just your success. Yeah. Like, and I look at like, what I'm making, whose lives I'm changing, how many people, not that it's about all the numbers, like you said, or monetary yeah, stuff, no. but sh showing that you do have the income or you do have the followers is proof that what you're doing is working. Like, yeah. just plain. To and put sometimes it, you know? it just takes some time for like what you're doing to start working in terms of if you're doing a coaching business like I do, like just 
you know, it's just a matter of time before one of your clients is a massive success and like yeah. there you are doing it. Or just if someone says, oh, you don't have a degree, like how are you able to, like how, how do you think you're qualified enough to have this knowledge to give other people? So I heard something, I forget who exactly said it, but I heard something recently where you're qualified or certified. There's a couple different ways. You can be a results getter, you can be a researcher, and you can be, I forget what the third R is. Like if you're already doing it, you're qualified and yeah. in, in health and fitness, there's a super fine line between people who are just doing it and getting results but are treating people in a negative way or giving them bad information. It's like really not regulated, so it's like a really touchy subject for sure. Yeah. But if you have the intention to learn as much as humanly possible to serve your clients in a powerful way and you're not just like, how can I make money from these people? It's like, how can I actually help these people? Yeah. You're automatically gonna want to go learn more. You're automatically gonna want to expand your knowledge. You're automatically gonna wanna do as many things as you possibly can to make sure that you're giving your clients the best possible experience. So if you're going at it with a giving intention and a giving mindset and like just trying to serve, you're automatically gonna to wanna to enhance your knowledge and, and learn more. So I definitely would say you have to do that. You have to like be competent. You have to like know what you're talking about, but yeah. that doesn't that shouldn't discourage you from starting. The only way that I learned how to be a really good online fitness coach was taking on clients and learning how their bodies worked and just, you know, being transparent and open open with them, saying, mm -hmm. I haven't experienced this before with a client, but I'm gonna be here to support you and learn how we can work through it together and like just make sure that you're doing the safest thing possible. Yeah, I think too with like YouTube, Instagram, any social media, for someone to say you shouldn't get started because you don't have a college degree in business or oh, in yeah, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, there's so many, nothing to do with business. There's so many more YouTuber. life experiences that you can get. Like we just talked about this again on my channel, lots of info there, but mm. not having a college degree, you can have so much more in-person physical life experience without a degree. All the seminars that you go to and like the extensive learning we've both done. Oh yeah. I'm not saying it like outweighs a college degree or anything, but don't ever tell someone they're not an educated person or not qualified or haven't, like you don't know what we've been through like growing up, like of course that's very valuable. I hope you guys understand like I'm not taking the value away from that, but that doesn't mean that you can't like be an influencer academy or join other things from your favorite social media people because they don't maybe fit that requirement because they're already proving that they have a good heart and they're wanting to share what they've learned with other people and help like grow, really just grow a community and be genuine. So I think if you resonate with someone like that and want to hire them for any type of service, you should go for it because their main goal is to help enhance your life. And then if you feel like, you know, you're, you're talking down to people who do provide that, but you want to do that yourself, mm -hmm. it's really discouraging for people who realize that they can follow their dream with online and social media mm -hmm. and other people are like well you can't because you're just a social media person it's so discouraging for other people who want to do it and feel like they can't because they yeah. see all these other people saying this to people who are like big and successful and have made it already it's so discouraging so never discourage someone else from their own dreams just because no. it doesn't resonate with you like you're not going to be everyone's favorite That's person the worst. and i think people as you say hate or like on my channel like i am very big on deleting going off a little tangent but okay, it kind of it goes into it like deleting comments that are straight up hate and just nasty like constructive criticism i think it, in order for you to grow you have to be open to that i agree but something with people just being so downright nasty for no reason their hate on you is coming from a place where they're insecure they have the mindset of lack or I cannot do this, I cannot accomplish this. So they don't wanna see anyone else be successful and accomplish that for themselves. Mm. So by you literally going for your goals, you're making them feel more insecure or like, it's the people who aren't willing to take those risks who wanna tell you, go, like you're gonna fall on your ass anyways. And that's where mm -hmm. you need to be like, no, watch me come at me in six months and like, look at all this growth I've had. And that's the most empowering feeling. So regardless of Look. any hate comment or people just being rude, like you gotta, it's so hard on social media because you want to let it bring you down sometimes. Even I do. Like I'll read shit comments. Oh, and I'm totally. Like, I'm like, damn, like that one hurt. Yeah. But it's like you're not going to grow if you just sit there and dwell on it. Like, I don't know. I think the best thing that I've learned when it comes to responding to criticism, like we're totally going off on a tangent because we're passionate. Just yeah. expect it. It's going to happen. Totally. Like let it happen. And even like yeah. failure in your business, like it might happen. It, it will. Very well. It, it actually will should. Yeah. Because if, if you've ever seen that meme or like visual or whatever where it's like, success isn't mm -hmm. this, it's, it's this. this. And yeah. just expect it to happen. It's literally just life and it happens and you have to plan for it and like allow your emotions to just be like, oh, okay, I knew this was going to happen. Let me, let me work through it. Yeah, definitely. All right, we'll do one more question. Way off on that. But yeah. it all ties together. So. It does. Perfect. 
When you turned 18, did you still have your parents? Did you move out? I went to college, but oh, okay. they paid for my first year and then I had loans. So. Yeah, same thing. I have, I, I think she's kind of like relating it with kind of being an entrepreneur, but and to moving out on your own, getting credit when you have none. Um, not to refer y'all to my channel. <laughs> <laughs> I have like my whole- Well, the question was on credit and how to yeah. hold credit when you're 18 or when you're like just getting started and you're young. Yeah. So, so. she has a whole entire video on yeah. building credit, so go check it out. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you guys uh, click the subscribe button if you haven't already. I know there's some new people on here. Nice to meet you guys. But make sure you go to her channel, Jordan's channel. It is awesome. She has an array of different videos. But if you like these kinds of videos, she yeah. literally has a whole series on it. So yeah. it's really cool. Make sure you check her out. Subscribe to her channel and watch the part one of this video. Yeah, that we did. We'll link it. And I would love to have you guys. And I'm like super honored to be. We're like all both honored so to be fun. on each other's channels. <laughs> I know, we had such a good time doing it. So thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye.